Hey, future AP Chemers, this is Mrs. De Bruin with How to Do Math Without a Calculator. So there's some basic things that I expect you to know before we get started. Like, what is 6 times 12? 72. Or, what is 5 plus 19? 24. These are some things that you should just know, and if you don't, then we might need to go back and study a bit. There's some others that I expect you to know, but they're a little bit more complicated, like 100 divided by 0.1. You probably are looking at that thinking, I should know how to do that, but I'm not quite sure. There's a few approaches. So the first thing you could do is just do 100 divided by 1, which is 100. When you divide by the decimal, you move your decimal point once to the right. So the answer is 1,000. Another approach would be looking at that as 100 divided by 1 tenth which means that you would multiply by the reciprocal and you would get 100 times 10 and again you'd get 1000. Another common thing that you should know is how to multiply with decimals. So 0.2 times 0.2. Again, you're probably thinking you should know how to do that. So you're just going to multiply 2 times 2 and get 4 and then recognize that your decimal is once and once again. So that's two decimal places and you're going to move that two decimal places to the left this time. One. Two. So your answer is 0.04. There's some common fractions that I expect you to know also. And they're up here. They're just the one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, one ninth, one tenth. You should memorize those. So I'm going to give you two more problems to solve before we really get started. Uh, and then you can pause the video and come back to them. They're just the common division and multiplication ones with a decimal. So the first one I'd like for you to try is 80 divided by 0.5. And then I'd also like for you to try 0.45 times 0 0.02. So go ahead and pause me and then come back for the answer. Okay, we're back. We're at 80 divided by 0.5. So a simple technique for this one, again, is just recognizing what is 5 into 80. If you don't know that that's 16, then you would have to do some sort of quick old school math here where you put a 1 and a 5 and a 3 and a 0 and then you get a 16. But if you did know it was 16, you would just do 5 into 16, recognizing that the decimal place is once over. And when we divide by decimals, we move our decimal once to the right. So the answer is 160. 0.45 times 2, you should know 45 times 2 is 90. So I'm going to write the answer 90 here. My decimal is moved once, twice, 3, 4. So I take my decimal and move it 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. The answer is 0 0.00. .00. Nine zero. I get a lot of questions if I need that zero there. I like it there because on a paper, if I just dot that, it might get confusing. People might not recognize or see that. You probably can't even see it from the video. All right, we're going to move on to some more difficult math now. Okay, next we have a multiplication problem with some scientific notation. My best advice for you would be to turn everything into scientific notation that you don't know how to handle. When you use scientific notation, it's simple to just multiply coefficients and then work with the exponents later. So we can look at this problem and we can sort of eliminate maybe the 1.2 and just work with the 1 here. We know that 3.2 times 1 is 3.2. And I know that if I multiply 0.2 times 3.2, I'm going to get 0.64 there. So if you don't believe me, you can try it, but we can add the 0.64 to that, which would give me 3.84. You could also just go ahead and do the long math out like you've learned and solve for that and you would also get 3.84. All of our minds work differently. For me, I can just quickly look at that and add that up. Now we're going to ha handle the multiplication with the exponents. When you multiply exponents, you add them. So I have a negative 3 plus a negative 2, which gives me a negative 5. My answer is 3.84 times 10 to the negative fifth. The next problem is division. We're going to again handle our coefficients first. 3.6 divided by 1.2 should be pretty simple for you. That is just simply 3. If you don't know that, you would have to go ahead and do some long math, but you probably can see that those go in quite easily. When you have exponents in division, you're going to subtract them. So the answer is going to be for sig figs, 3.0 times 10, 6 minus 4 is 2. The answer is 3.0 times 10 to the second. So most of the problems that we've done so far, I expect you to get a perfect answer as if you had calculated. But there's some that aren't going to be exactly perfect, and that's okay because we're learning how to do math for multiple choice. So you will have an A, B, C, D, 
and your answers will vary greatly. Sometimes they'll be with an exponent of a 21st, and sometimes they'll have a 10. They're just checking that you're in the ballpark. Now, when you don't have exponents and you're just working maybe with a smaller number, they do want to see that you're in the right area. So maybe you're at a 0.6 because the answer is 0.63. You don't need to come up with 0.63. You need to come up with roughly 0.6. So we're going to kind of ballpark and estimate the next couple problems. So first we have 2.602 divided by 4. And the best way to approach this is to turn this into scientific notation. So I would use 26.02 times 10, and that would be to the negative first, divided by 4. Now I'm just going to eliminate all of that work and just look at 26 divided by 4 for the moment. I know that 4 times 6 is 24, so my answer is roughly 6-ish, but I also know that 4 times 7 is going to give me 28. So that's roughly 7-ish. So I have 26 divided by 4, and I'm in the ballpark of 24 and 28. In between is 26. 24 plus 2 is 26, plus 2 is 28. So my answer has to lie somewhere in the middle here. This one's kind of tricky. You might want to replay this one. So my answer has to be something like 6.5. And again, that's for the 26 divided by 4. So if my answer is 6.5, now I'm going to go back and handle my exponent. Negative 1, and we'll just assume this is 4 times 10 to the 0. Minus 0 is still times 10 to the negative 1. So my answer is 0.65. So here's another problem for you to try very similar to the last one. You're going to have to use that sort of estimation and halfway thought. So if you'd like, you can pause and then try it on your own and then come back to take a look. So the answer here, again, is we're going to look at 54 uh, divided by 12. And so 54 times 10 to the negative first divided by 12.0. So if we take a look at the 54 divided by 12, we know that 12 times 4 is going to give me 48. 12 times 5 is going to give me 60. So again, we're looking at 54, which is halfway between both of these. So if 54 is halfway, then my answer has to be halfway between the 4 and the 5, which means that the answer must be 4.5. So 4.5, now we're going to handle our exponent. I just put a times 10 to the 0 anytime I don't have an exponent. Negative 1 minus 0 is still a negative 1. It's 4.5 times 10 to the negative first, which gives me 0.45. So our next problem is just a 310 divided by 42. And again, to handle this one, I would use scientific notation. So 31.0 times 10 to the first divided by, and I would use 4.2 times 10 to the first. So it's sort of easier to handle this piece rather than the larger piece. So just looking at that, you know that 4 times 7 is going to give me 28. You know that 4 times 8 is going to give me 32. We would probably guess that the answer is closest to 8. But you have to remember you do have a 0 0.2 here. And that 0 0.2 means that you're going to actually have a smaller number. When you divide by a larger number, your answer, by, divide by a larger number in the denominator, your answer is going to be a little less than what you think it is. So if this were 40, of course it would be closer to the 8. But since it's 4.2 when we're doing it here, it's going to be closer to the 7. The actual answer is 7.4. And then remember the negative, the one minus the one would give me an exponent of times 10 to the 0. So when you're looking at a multiple choice, you're hoping that you're in the right ballpark. You probably would come up with an answer somewhere between 7 and 8. If you had to do a little bit more math, then you most certainly would have to do some longer division and really go through and solve. But that is very, very rare. So you should be familiar with the next problem. This is a stoichiometry problem that you probably have seen before. One of the first changes you'll notice is that I no longer do boxes like this. Instead, I use a multiplication sign and I just write fractions. So common problem would be you start with your known. We use Avogadro's number to get some moles. We use a mole to mole ratio to come up with stoichiometry. And then finally, we end with the molar mass found on the periodic table. So let's look at first how to handle this. Let's just round 4.95 to 5 times 1 times 1 times 31. So I'm going to say that this is roughly 150 in the numerator. I know that I rounded, I use a number higher here, and I rounded down here, so I'm probably in the ballpark. Now I'm going to take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and multiply it by 4. I'm just going to simply use 24 times 10 to the 23rd in the denominator. You don't have to have proper scientific notation when you're doing your own math, so just use the 24. 
I know that 24 is like 25 going into 150 would be approximately six times. But I do know that I'm using a smaller number in the denominator, so my answer should be a little bit greater than six. And then this would be 150 times 10 to the zero. Zero minus 23 would be times 10 to the negative 23rd. So my answer should be a little bit greater than six times 10 to the negative 23rd. All right, so our next question is a molarity question. It reads, what volume is required to make a 1.5 molar solution of calcium chloride if you use 23.5 grams? So the first thing you have to remember is that molarity is equal to moles over liters. So your answer is gonna be reported to you in liters. But we need moles and we were given 23.5 grams of calcium chloride. So we're gonna do a quick mole calculation here. And we go and look up the molar mass of calcium chloride. I trust you can add those from the periodic table and you get 111.0 grams of calcium chloride is to one mole. So now we need to solve this math. Probably the easiest approach would be 23.5 divided by 11.1 .1 times 10 to the first. And so we know that 11 goes into 23 probably about two times, because 11 times two is 22. So we're gonna get about, and we're gonna put times 10 to the zero, uh, we're gonna get about two times 10 to the negative first. Zero minus one is a negative one. So my answer is about 0 0.200 moles, roughly. Now we're gonna take that and we're going to now calculate it with the molarity. So we're gonna go back here and use our molarity, which is 1.5 molar, is equal to 0 0.2 moles over x. And this is gonna be in liters. So I'm just gonna show you again how to do algebra, but you should definitely know this. To get rid of x in your denominator, you need to multiply by x, so they cancel you're gonna need to multiply by x on this side. Now to solve for x, you're gonna divide by 1.5, divide by 1.5. So now x, which is my liters, is equal to 0.2 moles divided by 1.5 molar. So when you look at this problem, the best approach would be likely to just change both of these in scientific notation to something a bit easier to do. So we're gonna use 20 times 10, and if you go backwards, that would be negative two, divided by 15 times 10 to the negative one. So 20 divided by 15 should be pretty easy to look into. So that goes one time, let me erase here. So this is gonna go one time, and then it's gonna be a remainder of five, so I'm gonna put five over 15. So five over 15 is one and one third. And if you remember, I said in the beginning of this that you should remember your fractions. So if you're taking a look up there, the one third is 0.33. So my answer here should be 1.33. Let's not forget about our exponent. So we had negative two <laughs> minus a negative one. So we're gonna end up with a positive, adding a one here. So this is just gonna be a negative one exponent. So we're gonna move our decimal once to the left and we get 0 0.133, and that would be liters. Okay, the next problem we're gonna do is a gas loss problem. It says find the volume of a gas at 2.5 atmospheres containing 0 0.90 grams of carbon dioxide at 25 degrees C. So you should recognize that this is the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, and it's always a good idea to rearrange your letters using algebra before you start so that you don't make a mistake there. So we just rearrange, and we should recognize that we need moles, but we were given grams. So the first thing we're gonna do is convert our 0 0.90 grams of CO2 into moles. So you go and look on your periodic table, and you'll find that the molar mass of CO2, 16 times two is 32, plus 12 is 44.0 grams into one mole. So we're gonna take 0 0.90, divide that by 44, and you'll see that 44 goes into 90 almost two times, like an 88. So we can say that this is 90 times 10 to the negative two, which makes that easy for you, two times 10 to the negative two. Remember, we would say that this is times 10 to the zero, so negative two minus zero is negative two. So my answer for moles is 0 0.02 moles, approximately. So now we're gonna go back to this equation and plug our moles in and solve for P. So we'll have P equals N, which is 0 0.02 moles, times R. Now your R value can be two different things, and when you go look on your equation sheet, it's gonna be 0 0.0821, and you'll look for the value that says liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. 
And so atmospheres tells us that we need to use 0.0821 because the pressure unit is in atmospheres. So we're going to plug in 0.0821 here. And then we're going to multiply now by um, the temperature. But we have to add 273 to this to get Kelvin. So that's 298 Kelvin. Just erase here. So 298. All divided by our pressure, which is 2.5 atmospheres. So I'm going to multiply across the top first, and I'm going to just simply round this as best as I can to 2 times 10 to the negative 2 times, and I'm just going to round that to 0.1, so 1 times 10 to the negative first, times 300, so 3 times 10 to the second. And that's all over 2.5. So I have 2 times 1 times 3, pretty simple. We get 6. We add our exponents, negative 2 plus a negative 1 is negative 3, plus 2 is a negative 1 divided by 2.5. So it might be easiest at this point to turn this into a 60 divided by 25. So if I take, just adjust, if I take 60, that'd be 60 here, this was 0.6, now I'm making this 60, it's going to be 60 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 25, which would be times 10 to the negative first. So 60 divided by 25 should be pretty simple for you. If you examine that, you get what class? Oh, you guys aren't paying attention. <laughs> so my class wasn't paying attention because AP Chem is over. Uh, so we're going to do 60 divided by 25. So 25 goes into 50 twice. So we're going to be 2. And then if you think about the remainder of 50 and 60 minus 50 is 10. So it would be 10 over 25. So 5 goes into 10 two times, 5 goes into 25 five times, so 2 fifths is 0.4. So my answer is approximately 2.4, and now let's handle our exponent. Negative 2 minus a negative 1 would be a positive, uh, a negative 1, so times 10 to the negative first. So the answer is about 0.24, and it's pressure, so it should be in atmospheres. At this point, say you went to go look at the multiple choice, and there was an answer between 0.2 and 0.3. Your answer is really in between them. And now remember that we estimated here, we rounded this up to 1, 0.1, and then we made it 1 times 10 to the negative first. So really, we did overestimate. So what I was saying is that we rounded up here the 0.08 to 0.1. So if our answer that we came up with was 0.24, but there was only multiple choice available for 0.2 or 0.3, now we would have to come much closer. So we're going to retry this problem trying to get to a closer answer. So I'm still going to take the 2 times 10 to the negative 2, but I'm going to change this and use the 0.08 here. So I'm going to use 8 times 10 to the negative 2. Keep that at 300 because that's very close, and again the 2.5. So now we're just going to do our math. 2 times 8 is 16 times 3, so you can just go ahead and do that. So you get 48 times 10, and then I have negative 2. Negative 2 is negative 4 plus a 2, so this is going to be negative 2, all over 2.5. This, again, is pretty simple here. If you evaluate this, we could do 48 times 10 to the negative 2 over 25 times 10 to the negative first. 25 goes into 48 twice, so our answer is 2 times 10. Negative 2 minus a negative 1 is just a negative 1. The answer is definitely closer to 0.2. So if you were evaluating this for a multiple choice, you would choose the 0.2 answer instead of the 0.3. So I hope that math without a calculator is going to be easy for you. Uh, if you need help, you should re-watch this video, retry the problems on your summer packet, or you can go online and look for some more YouTube links uh, for help or ask any of my former AP students for help. Uh, have a great summer.